Hey guys, welcome to Make Tech. Today we're going to do a full review of this Creality CR10. If you're here from Woodwork Web, thanks for visiting. If you guys aren't from Woodwork Web, make sure to go check out Colin's channel where we did a kind of overview on how you can use a 3D printer in your shop, including building some cool uh, wood fiber bowls and stuff and some cool tools you can use in your shop. So this CR10 has been getting a lot of buzz lately online. A lot of people are raving that it's one of the best budget printers out there. It offers a lot of features for the price range, like a good print quality, a large print area, and a heated print bed that lets you print multiple types of plastic. So we're going to run this through all the way from unboxing to setup, and we'll see how this CR10 does. So opening the box here on this CR10, uh, the packing right away looks like it's been packed quite decently some nice foam inserts and here on the top level you can see that you have uh, both the bottom frame and the heating plate pulling off the top layer here on the bottom here you can see that you have the z frame the power unit some tape and a box of accessories so here's everything you get in the box here's the bottom frame with the printing plate a uh, box of goodies and accessories uh, some printing bed tape and the Z-frame and the power and control unit. Having a look here in the bits and pieces box, you got a bunch of papers, what looks like a warranty card, a service card right here. Here you got a quick start guide. Uh, here's a note about installing the grub screws for the Z-axis and a parts list. Here you get a nice little 200 gram spool of white filament, so that's a nice include, lets you start printing right away. Power cable, here you have the spool handle. Here uh, is an extra piece of extruder cable, a USB cable, and that's a filament tip cleaner there. Here you got some T-brackets for your base, a bunch of extra bolts and screws, here you got a nice little tool set that's included with everything you need for the printer, so that's nice. Here you got a putty scraper. Here's the handle for the filament spool. And last here you have a micro SD card with USB adapter. So before you start setting this up, the first thing you want to do is take this a USB adapter, plug it into your computer, and have a look at the files in there. There should be a manual that's kind of half-ass decent for uh, setting this printer up that you can have a look at. So the first thing I would do is you want to have a look at your uh, printing plate here to see if it's loose. On a lot of uh, people's models they have shipped out quite loose. So you can tighten this printing plate down by taking the Allen branch that's provided and using it to tighten down these bearing bolts here uh, just until the top plate is uh, still moving freely but most of the slop is gone. Next thing you want to do is take your z-axis frame, flip it upside down, and you want to remove this uh, packing plastic here that's been placed on the bottom motor. And after that, you'll see that there's some zap straps here holding everything together. So you're going to take some clips and remove those. Next thing you want to do is install your z-axis onto your bottom frame. And you do this by taking the, M5, or the M5 bolts that are provided, propping this thing up. And you'll want to get it on its side like this. Then simply insert the M5 bolts and use the provided Allen wrench to get them tightened. And do the other side. The next thing you want to do is install these T-frame braces. You want to install the one without the switch onto the side without the motors. And just tighten it up using the provided Allen keys. Next take the one with the switch and place it on the same side as the motors. Once again, using the provided Allen keys. So the next thing we want to do is install the cables coming from your power and control unit onto your 3D printer. Now these are all labeled with these nice yellow clips, so it makes them easy to install. And there's also a reference guide in the user manual on the SD card that helps too. So we'll start installing the x-axis here. And to get one of the x-axis installed, you might have to remove one of the, or loosen one of the the T-axis or T-frame plates that you just previously installed. The next set of wires we want to plug in are a set of three wires. One goes to your extruder and the other two go to your Z-axis. Lastly, we're going to do the Y-axis. It's just another set of two wires. And this is probably the easiest here to just simply plug in and 
we're all connected. Next, you want to plug in the stepper motor and the limit switch uh, cables. They're different, so you can't plug them in wrong. On the side here, you'll find a switch, and you'll want to make sure it's set to the right voltage for your country. And last, plug in the power cable to the back of the power and control module. Next, we can install the arm for the spool holder with the two little thumb screws that are provided, and then screw in the spool holder. So the next thing you want to do is check your belts for snugness. My bottom belt was okay, but my top belt did need a little bit of tightening. So you simply lo are loosen off these two little bolts here. And with a spare Allen key, simply push the tightening mechanism out and retighten the bolts. Basically, you're just looking to get your belt snug. The next thing you want to do is take your filament tube and attach it to the filament extruder. Once the filament tube is installed, you can start feeding in some filament. So you do this by pushing back on the little lever on the filament extruder and then feeding the filament into the hole that's provided for you on the outside of the filament extruder until it stops. Next, it's time to unpack the printing plate. So undo the clips, remove the glass. Under the glass, you're going to find two pieces of large masking tape. And on the glass, you're going to find a film that you need to peel away. So go ahead and do that. Put the glass back onto your plate and secure it in using the provided little clips. In order to get your 3D prints to attach better to your print bed, you'll want to adhere these two large masking tape pads onto it. I found these large masking tape pieces to be a pain to actually attach, so I ended up actually messing up one and used the normal masking tape that actually came with the printer on the other side here. Next, you'll want to go to your power and control unit and go down to auto home. After it's auto home, you want to go in and select disable steppers. Power down your unit and you should be able to now move both your plate and your hot end by hand. Now we want to level the print bed and you do this by taking a regular piece of printer print paper and trying to slide it in between your print bed and the nozzle. It should just slide while getting some very minimal resistance. You'll find a knob under each one of the four corners that will let you do the adjustment. And once you've done the four corners, do your middle and it should be set. Now before you start printing, you're going to want to take some glue stick and just add it to the area that you're about to print to. This just makes the print stick a little bit better to your print bed. To start printing, insert your SD card, turn on your machine, go in, select from prepare, auto home, and let your machine find home again. So when you're ready to print, you can go into your power and control unit here and select the cat model from your SD card. And then you're going to have to wait for the printer and the print head, or sorry, the print bed and the print head to warm up. Once it's warmed up, you'll start printing. Here's a close-up view of this cat statue print. Now, the one thing I can tell you is this cat is not going to print properly. On virtually all the CR10s that have been shipped out, the cat file is actually corrupt. So it comes out almost decapitated, but it's almost a uh, kind of rite of passage to print out your uh, corrupt cat file. So we'll see how this one turns out. So here's the end result. As you can see, there's a big globule of melted filament there. Now, I don't know if this is because of the corrupted file caused this directly or if it just detached by itself, but it did detach, and that is what caused the big globule to build up there. So in order to kind of give this printer a proper test, I went and downloaded and printed here a calibration cube, which is exactly what you think it is. It's just a cube. And here's the cube compared to the cat. The cube printed just great, so I'm happy with that. So here's a little look at some of the stuff we printed with this machine. I did a rundown on all these for the video I did on Colin's channel at Woodwork Web. So this is a, our cylinder center finder. Here we got some drill bit sharpeners in two different sizes. Next here we got a drill bit holder. This is a drill bit holder for a Milwaukee M18 drill. Here's another cylinder center finder in a different design. And here we got a hacksaw handle. And they work just great. So here's some examples of some items we've done with a wood PLA plastic. 
This is a bowl that was finished sanded on the outside and left uh, unfinished on the inside. Here we got the same bowl, just scaled down. This had a stain added to it and then a layer of shellac. We then made a file handle with a little bit of acrylic paint added to it. And here we have a spinning top that was painted blue and red with acrylic paint. So guys, after printing a whole bunch of this printer, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up. It is really a good, reliable printer for its price range. It printed most of the stuff I threw at it like a champ uh, in decent quality. Now, there were two things I didn't really like about this printer, or two problems really I had. First, it came with the dreaded bent glass problem that a lot of people have with this. It seems that the glass is either concave or convexed a bit. Now, apparently that can be fixed really easily with just replacing it with a cheap uh, Home Depot mirror tile, which I have some coming in the mail, so we'll give that a try and I'll make a big video of that if it works out for me. Uh, the other problem is I found this printer to be noisy. Now, that's another issue that apparently that can be fixed relatively affordably by just changing out the motor mounts and putting some, or putting some quieter fans into the unit. So yeah, uh, all in all, if you're looking for a budget 3D printer, I would say this is the one to get. If you want to find out more about this printer, Make sure you check out the links in the description. Thanks to our friends at GearBest for sending us this printed review. And please remember to subscribe. Hope you like this review and thanks for watching. That's my new favorite toy.